Hi friends, welcome to our New Year's Day Christmas service online. Uh, I just want to say I really hope that you've had a happy Christmas and now it's time that I pray you have a peaceful New Year. I hope that uh, God's been good to you and show you his favour and blessings and faithfulness and mercies over the Christmas season. I trust that you felt the love of the love of God and the love of family and friends and that you know that you are loved. And we as a church family want you to know that you are loved by Christ, loved by God and loved by us. So we're going to head into our New Year's Day service. All of our Advent candles are lit. The Christ candle was lit on Christmas Day. And so now it's time to enter into a new year. Enter into a new year. We know that Jesus came as light of the world. And my prayer is that this new year we will see the light of the world light up this dark world. I'll say that again. We pray that the light of the world will light up this dark world. And uh, that's our heart's desire as a church this year. We're going to start with a time of worship. Uh, a couple of songs uh, that I really hope and pray will lead us into God's presence this morning before we lead into communion. And look forward to an incredible word of God that I was in uh, the privilege of sitting through when it was being recorded from Tembe. And I just know that the Lord is able to speak to you today, even in the confines of your own room, your own home, wherever you're watching this, the Lord is able to speak to you. And I know today that he can, and I pray that he will, as we uh, focus on our God at the start of this new year. So let's sing together. Friends, last night, I guess some of us, probably not me, but some of us would have been singing the old Lang Syne as uh, we entered this new year. And um, we're going to start our worship by singing uh, a Christian version of that tune, but with Christian words. And it talks about us uh, standing together in unity, going into a new year as family, shoulder to shoulder, hand in hand into the great unknown of what 2023 brings. So let's sing together this song for all you've done.
family will go Thank you for all that you did in 2022, for your faithfulness through that year, through the highs and lows of 2022. We thank you that you were travelling that journey with us. You were on our road. You You were with us in the trials, the temptations, the struggles, and the joys, and the laughters, the celebrations. And we thank you, Lord, for your goodness and for all that you've done for us in 2022. And we look forward to a new year of the Lord's favour. Let's continue our worship now with a song called Goodness of God. Again, as we sing about looking back about how God has been faithful in our lives. Let's sing together Goodness of God. Surrender 
time of worship again by singing the chorus all my life. Friends, we have so many people in church that can testify to the goodness of God and it's been great to sing of his goodness over the last year in 2022 and previously. To sing of it, it's been good to sing of his faithfulness, to sing of the goodness of God and to thank him for all that he's done in years gone by. And we look back and we remember the times of God's goodness and favour to us, don't we? But now we look forward to a new year. We don't want to live on yesterday's blessings. We want to press on into the things of God that we will see even greater things in the days ahead. So before we turn to the word, let me just invite you to prepare yourself for communion. Barry is about to lead us in our New Year's Day communion. And uh, thank you, Barry. Good morning, church. Well, it's a new year once again, and how many of you spent, spent the night welcoming the new year, enjoying Jules Holland on the telly, and making those wonderful, wonderful New Year's resolutions? And how many have broken them already? It's something that we do every year, something that always goes wrong, but I want to tell you something that this Christmas we've just celebrated the joy of the birth of Jesus. And I want you to remember that with the birth of Jesus, he never fails. What promises he makes, he keeps. And that is my encouragement to you today. Whatever you do, whatever you think, remember that Jesus is your saviour. He is your life and he gave his life for you and in Hebrews we read for the law since it has only a shadow of the good things to come and not the very form of things can never be the same sacrifices year by year which they offer continually make perfect those who draw near otherwise would they not have ceased to be offered because the worshippers, having once been cleansed, no longer have had consciousness of sin? But in those sacrifices there is a reminder of sins year by year. For it is impossible for the blood of bulls and goats to take away sins. Therefore, when he comes into the world, he says, 
sacrifice and offerings thou hast not desired, but a body thou hast prepared for me, in whole burnt offerings and sacrifices for sin thou hast taken no pleasure. Then I said, Behold, I have come. In the roll of the book it is written of me, to do thy will, O God. And the will of God is that Jesus should die. Not just an easy death, but a death of pain, a death of torment, a death of rejection. And in the communion we remember that death. We remember how much he gave for you and me. Doesn't matter when we look at the whole body of the church, because he died for all those. But on a personal level, he died for you, and he would have done it even if you was the only one in the world. So we come this morning, and we come to take the bread and the wine. And it tells us in 1 Corinthians, For I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus, in the night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup also after supper, saying, This cup is a new covenant of my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat the bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Therefore, whoever eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of the bread and drink of the cup. So for he who eats him and drinks, eats and drinks judgment in himself, if he does not judge the body rightly so. So we come, we come aware that we all have faults. And in this new year, we more, all more than likely have sinned in some way. Not just in actions, not just in talk, but possibly in thoughts. So I want you to take a couple of moments just to think and to come before the Lord and ask for forgiveness. Lord, we take this bread, the bread that symbolises your body, broken for us, a body that was scourged, a body that was pierced by the spear, a body that had nails driven into it, but you freely gave for us. So we take this in remembrance of you. Amen. Lord, your body, let forth the life-giving blood so that we might be washed clean, so that we might be able to come to you, saved and restored with a life everlasting. So we take this in remembrance of you. Amen.
Lord bless you and keep you safe and guide you through this year as you go in your way with him. Amen. Praise the Lord. Um, good morning, church. And uh, we thank the Lord for this opportunity to, to gather in some fashion, you know, in our homes and everywhere where we are, to gather in the church, those who, who will be in a church setting, to hear the word of the Lord for 2023. Well, the, the word of the Lord for this day, the 1st of January, 2023. Um, let us pray. Father, we thank you. Thank you, Lord, for the opportunity to come into your presence and acknowledge your Lordship and acknowledge that you are our Father, you are our God, you are our Saviour, you are our Redeemer, you are Sanctifier, yes. and you are the God who goes before us, yes. you are the God who hems us in before and behind, yes. and we enter this year, Lord, with grateful and thankful hearts yes. that your presence goes before us. Yes. Thank you, Father, and as we listen to your word today, we pray, Father, that you, you speak to us and minister life, health, healing, deliverance, all the things you need to minister to us this day. In the name of the Lord Jesus, we know, Lord, that there will be plenty of word in this year, 2023, but today is the first day of the year, yeah. and Lord, we just want to commit our lives and our the life of, of, of the church yeah. into your hands. We want to commit, Lord, our ministries, our families, our children, Lord, our workplaces. We commit them all into your hands. Yes. We just thank you, Father, that you are well able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all we can ever ask, think, or imagine according to the power that's at work in us. So, Lord, we thank you that the power in us is the power of the Holy Spirit. Yes. The authority that, Lord, is in us is the authority you gave us, Lord Jesus, when you, when you ascended and you said you were giving us all authority. And so, Lord, we thank you and we bless your name. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. amen. Um, if I was to, to uh, call, have a... Um, a title for this a sermon, for this word, it would be the seed is in the ground. Amen. So when I was seeking the Lord about um, what to minister on, the Lord dropped in my heart um, Genesis chapter 2. I will read it. Uh, Genesis chapter 2, if we can turn there from verse 5. Oh, let's start from verse 4. I like doing that. <laughs> and it reads, These are the generations of the heavens and the earth when they were created in the day that the Lord hath made. Lord God made the earth and the heavens. And verse 5 says, And every plant of the field before it was in the earth, and every herb of the field before it grew. For the Lord God had not caused it to rain upon the earth, and there was not a man to till the ground. Amen. And um, verse 15 reads, oh no, let's just continue a bit, for, to verse, up to verse 9. But there went up a mist from the earth and watered the whole face of the ground. And the Lord God formed men of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and men became a living soul. And the Lord God planted a garden eastward in Eden, and there he put the men whom he had formed. And out of the ground made the Lord God to grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight and good for food, the tree of life also in the midst of the garden, and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Amen. And then verse 15 says, And the Lord God took the man and put him into the garden of Eden to dress it and to keep it. 
And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat, but of the tree of knowledge of good and evil thou shalt not eat of it, for in the day that thou eatest thereof thou shalt surely die. Amen. Uh, we thank the Lord for, for his word. And um, we, um, when I looked at it, uh, chapter 2 of Genesis, I was reminded that there was chapter 1. And in chapter 1, we know that uh, that's where it, it, it talks about the beginning when the Lord created the heavens and the earth. And verse 11 says, And God said, Let the earth bring forth grass, the herb yielding seed, and the fruit tree yielding fruit after his kind, whose seed is in itself upon the earth. And it was so. And verse 12 says, And the earth brought forth grass and herb yielding seed after his kind, and the tree yielding fruit, whose seed was in itself after his kind. And God saw that it was good. Amen. So the Lord saw in, 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 in chapter 1 that this year, uh, yielding uh, fruit uh, of herbs and trees was good in chapter 1. And yet in chapter 2, it, it says that, um, And every plant of the field before it was in the earth, and every herb of the field before it grew, for the Lord God had not caused it to rain upon the earth, and there was not a man to till the ground. So in chapter 1, the Lord created the heavens and the earth, and everything uh, that was created, you can read chapter 1, and he created man last. So when he was saying all was good and all was good in and, and verse 12 of chapter 1 and the plant and the, and, the, and, the, and the herbs were good, they were in the ground because he had not created man yet. Yeah. So the Lord God saw that it was good and it was in the ground. And it's the same principle that the Lord uses through the Bible. Every time he plants something or he starts something, we look at, for instance, a man like King David, when the Lord called him and he was looking after his father's flock, and, uh, and, and the uh, uh, prophet of God anointed him. He went back to look after the sheep, and it took years before that manifestation of that anointing came into being. So when the Lord said it was good of the fruit of the ground, the, the, the grass and the herbs and the trees, they were all still in the ground. And the Lord does it with us. He plants things inside our hearts. He causes his word, which is the seed of faith, to, to, to be planted inside our hearts. And he allows it to grow on the inside and germinate on the inside and be, and be watered from the inside before it, it manifests. Amen. So, if we look at the year 2022, the Lord has done so much for, for us, uh, his children. So much word has been preached in all the churches. But I will speak about my church and say, we remember, brethren, that from the beginning, the Lord taught us about our vision, and then the Lord was on about finding our Pentecostal roots, and then the Lord was teaching us that we, we, we needed to be a praying people and, 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 and a praying church, and the Lord also said that we, we, we want, wanted us to love him above all else. Amen. And all that word was being produced and the seed was being planted in the heart of our church. And the Lord also went ahead and uh, he taught us to pray. He called us to pray corporately. And uh, for that we can even look at uh, the book of Matthew chapter 18 uh, where the Lord Jesus um, teaches us a few principles of the kingdom. And, and Matthew chapter 18, I'll read from verse 18. It reads, Verily I say unto you, 
Whatsoever ye shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, mm-hmm. and whatsoever ye shall loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Yes. Again I say unto you, that if two of you shall agree on earth as touching anything that they shall ask, it shall be done mm-hmm. for them of my Father which is in heaven. For where two or three are gathered together in my name, there I am in their midst. Amen. So, if two or three are gathered together and they don't ask anything, we don't kind of expect the Lord to answer what we didn't ask. So, if two or three are gathered and they as touching and agree on earth as touching anything that they shall ask, it shall be done for them of my Father which is in heaven. So we were taught in 2022, as we were taught before, but I'm talking about where the Lord was leading us as a ministry, that we need to come together, pray together, agree together, because there is power in agreement. That's the power that the Lord Jesus taught us. Amen. And... um, Going back to the book of Genesis, and I will read from uh, chapter 3, but I will only read one bit in chapter 3. But chapter 3 talks about the fall of man. After the Lord God had created, uh, uh, had formed man, and then he created woman out of his rib, and um, and the Lord put them in the garden, and... Uh, the Lord gave them a responsibility to, to, to take care of the garden. In chapter 1, he gave them to, uh, the uh, power to have dominion on, over everything that he had created. Um, and, and, uh, and, and, and the Lord said in, in chapter 1, verse 28, And God blessed them and said to them, Be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it. And have dominion over the fish of the sea, the fowl of the air, and over every living thing that moves upon the earth. And then in chapter 2, he gave them the responsibility to take care of the garden. Amen. In chapter 3, then, when when men uh, sinned, or the fall of men, when Eve, uh, uh, the serpent, um, uh, uh, spoke to Eve and Eve uh, ended up eating the fruit and gave the husband and gave Adam and then it, it, took, it took away the authority that, that the Lord had given these men because, uh, and, and women because the Lord had said to him if you eat of this fruit you shall surely die and you and I the Lord is taking us into 2023 And the Lord has blessed us. And the Lord has given us all the things that some of them we haven't seen the manifestation, but we know that it is good. We know that the Lord is taking this church further. We know that the Lord is bringing souls into the kingdom through us. We know that the Lord is allowing us to grow in in stature as a church and is allowing us to grow in in, in, uh, in, in, in the gifts of the Holy Spirit as a church and the Lord has spoken into our lives. We have seen prophecies of different things that the Lord has shown pictures of things that he has given us. They are in the ground. And the Lord said that he had not had a man to look after this garden. That's why everything was still in the ground. But So for us, the Lord has given us these things, allow them to grow inside of us. And in 2023, we want to see the manifestation, amen, of the things that the Lord has promised us, because we are ready. When he called David, and he was still looking, looking after his father's flock, he wasn't quite ready. The Lord was preparing him out there in the in the um, as a shepherd boy looking after his father's sheep, fighting lions and bears and all sorts. And the Lord was preparing him. And in the fullness of time, the Lord called him. Amen. Amen. And in the fullness of time, the Lord did the same with Moses. When he first called him, he had to take him out of Egypt and put them in the desert so that he, had, he learned 
how to survive in the desert. He learned what was poisonous and what was good to eat. And he, he, by the time the Lord brought him back, the burning bush and everything, he was ready to lead a whole nation of Israel through the desert that he knew. He was ready. So the Lord does that. He plants a seed inside of our hearts to prepare us for where he's taking us. Yeah. He doesn't plant the seed for the fun of it and it, then it goes nowhere. No, 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 no. In Philippians 1 verse 6, he says, He who began a good thing, a good work in you, he will see it to completion. Yeah. Amen. So all the word that the Lord has spoken to us as a church, all the ministry, Oh, I remember one time Glennis ministered on Blossom Where You Are At. Yeah. Where all the ministry that has allowed us to blossom where we are at. Yeah, sure. It was preparing us for 2023 and we enter this year with praise. Yeah. We enter this year rejoicing that the Lord God goes before us. He has shown us in 2022 that he is for us. Yeah. He will go before us. He will give us victory. All we need to do is to come together, pray together, believe God, yeah. mm, and believe that what he, he said he was going to do, he was going to do. Amen. And when it comes to all the pictures that the Lord has been showing us in the church, he, he was first and foremost showing us that he's engaged with us. Yes. He's not out there, you know, wondering what we are doing. He's right there showing us pictures of little girls, showing us pictures of, of all sorts. Yeah. I'm sure Ashley will, will repeat those pictures or show us again to re encourage and revive us and show us where the Lord is taking us because we believe. Amen. Yes. We are a people of faith and we believe that the Lord speaks to us. So as he speaks to us, and we enter into the new year with, with confidence. I remember last year it was we enter with confidence. Yeah. But we, we enter sure that for real, for real God speaks to us. For real God is in, in our midst and his Holy Spirit is leading and guiding us in every single thing we do. We commit it to the Lord and he will do it. And when these things are ready to come up, from the ground as they did when 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 the lord said to, to when the lord said in in genesis chapter 2 that because no one had been made who would till the ground who would look after this garden so the the, the lord did his thing underground yeah. and you know you and i when we plant um, a seed in the ground we look after that patch we look after it we remove all the things that we know will not do the particular plant that we are after good we water it we don't overdo it we water it and we take care of it and the day that it sprouts we are ready We've been looking after this thing. When it sprouts, we are there, we are ready, and uh, we know that it will grow, and it will, it will produce fruit, and amen. So sometimes, sometimes when you have planted something, you, you put seed, okay, and you put a hundred seeds, you know that sometimes some of the seed gets eaten by whatever underground there and, and other things, they, they, they come up, they manifest. And it happens as well in the Bible, the Lord shows us. When Eve, we will read uh, in Genesis 3, um, on the fall of men, uh, we will just read verse, verse 24. He, he, the Lord, he drove out the men as he blessed at the east of the Garden of Eden. So after, after the fall of men, the Lord drove him out. Yeah. But also, I will read verse 16. He says, unto the woman, he said, I will greatly multiply your sorrow in, in conception, and so thou shalt bring forth children, and they shall, uh, the desire shall be of thy husband, and he shall rule over them. But he also said to the serpent, in verse 15, I will put enmity between you and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. So, so when Eve then had the first fruit of her womb, and he, she 
she gave birth to Cain and Abel. When Cain killed Abel, that would have discouraged anybody. And like, what's what's up with this seed that is supposed to bruise the the, the head of the of the serpent? Now it's 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 bruising each other. You know, it was enough reason for for Eve to to give up, but she didn't. And uh, the Bible says that. Uh, um, in verse 17 of chapter 4 of Genesis. And, uh, and I'm not verse 18. And unto Enoch was born Erad, and Erad beget Mehul. No, no, no. I, I, I didn't want that one. What I want is verse 25 of chapter 4. And Adam knew his wife again. Yeah. And she bare a son and called his name Seth. For God said, for God said she had appointed me another seed instead of Abel whom, God, whom Cain slew. Yeah. Amen. So, for God said she, it means for God said, Eve said, yeah. God had appointed me another seed instead of Abel whom Cain slew. And, and to Seth to him also there was born a son, and he called his name Enosh, Enos, and then began men to call upon the name of the Lord yes. again. Amen. Amen. So all hope is not lost when some of the seed that is in the ground doesn't Amen. bring forth fruit. You, you persevere. You keep allowing the word of God to produce that seed of faith inside of you so that that seed of faith will produce fruit. And the Lord is faithful. He will produce fruit. He will cause uh, the fruit to come out of the ground. Amen. So going back then on the tree of good and evil, we are in Genesis today, I'm afraid. We keep reflecting on other things, but going back to the tree of good and evil. So now, um, and the Lord uh, told them they would eat of anything in the garden, any fruit, any tree, except that one. And you and I, the Lord is saying to us as we enter into 2023, we will, should eat of any fruit in the garden, except the truth, of good and evil, that one. There are things that you just can't eat. There are so many things in, in the day that we... Um, we, we're living in that look good, that look good to eat, but they are not good for you. So the Lord has said for the evil things in this generation, touch not. Mm -mm. Do not touch them because they might look harmless, but you and I know that we have an enemy. The enemy is, is walking around like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. And it doesn't come with 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 with, uh, with uh, uh, big teeth and everything to you and I and horns. He comes looking like it is all good. Yeah. And some things that look good, you allow you work them through the word of God. Allow the word of God to show you if those things are good or not. You know, find a word that will tell you what that what you want to get involved in. Is it godly or not? And um, in First Thessalonians chapter five, we get. Um, I will. I will just read from verse sixteen, an exhortation on how we should live. It says, "Rejoice evermore. Pray without ceasing. In everything, give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Quench not the spirit." Despise not prophesying, prove all things, hold fast that which is good. And then he says, abstain from all appearance of evil. Amen. So let's walk into this year abstaining from all appearance of all evil. 
Because we know that the, the enemy is not sitting there chilling, thinking, you know, I'll, I'll, leave, I'll leave them to do whatever uh, as long as I'm okay on my side. No, 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 no. The enemy doesn't work like that. He is after you and I. He's after the kingdom of God and after those things, that seed that the Lord has put into your heart to germinate and to, to he doesn't want it to sprout out. So, and then it also says in the book of Timothy, Second Timothy chapter 3, I'll read from verse 1 to 5. It says, This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come, for men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truth breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying the power thereof. From such, turn away. So as we enter into 2023, we thank God that we are not entering in darkness, we are not entering blind. The Lord is speaking the way he spoke to us in 2022 when we went through all the things that we went through, the good and the bad, the, 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 the sad and the happy. The Lord was with us. The Lord never left us nor forsook us. We know that we have a testimony that the Lord was with us. He has carried us through the tough times. And as we enter 2022, he says, abstain from every appearance of evil. But he also says that we, we should abstain from the things that, uh, we should be careful of the things that he's mentioning in 2 Timothy 3 verse 1 to 5. You can go on uh, reading further if you like, but those, that's where I, uh, I, I kind of chose to read. And because the Lord God, he created us for good works. He had a plan for our lives. And he had a plan for Adam and Eve. And uh, when they fell, the Lord did not give up on them. Thank you. Amen. He did not give up on them. And he had a plan of salvation from the, uh, the, 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 the foundations of the world. Yeah. And when the Lord Jesus came, um, uh, generations and generations after Adam and Eve, when the Lord Jesus came, guess what the first time he was addressing God's people, guess what he said? Um, he said in Matthew chapter 4 after he had been tempted by the enemy and, uh, and, and taken to a mountain and all that but the first thing he said when he addressed God's people in verse 17 was from that time Jesus began to preach and say repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand and then he says, in, in, in the Lord Jesus says in the book of Luke um, 17, 21, he says, the kingdom of heaven is within you. So he was bringing a kingdom that starts from within and goes without, out there to affect, affect the people of God and bring people to God. Amen. So he starts ministering on the kingdom. And it brings back what Adam and Eve lost in the garden. They, lived, they, they lost their dominion, they lost the kingdom. And then the Lord Jesus comes and he says, the kingdom of God is here. The kingdom of God is at hand. The kingdom of God is within you. And, this, and, and the kingdom of God is like unto a servant, um, unto a man who called his servant. The kingdom of God. Throughout the Gospels, the Lord Jesus teaches us about the kingdom of God, the principles of the kingdom of God, how we live in the kingdom of God, how we conquer as children of the kingdom of God. Amen. So you and I enter into 2023 knowing that we are children of the kingdom first we know that there is a seed it's in the ground the lord has already laid it and put everything that needs to be put in the in your heart yeah. and um, if you remember the, the 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 parable of the sower went out to sow and some was on rocky ground some was on this it's all about a seed and the lord has planted a seed inside you and i 
and uh, we need to live like kingdom people. Yeah. When he taught, when the disciples said, teach us how to pray, he said, this is how you pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Thy kingdom come. So today we are walking into 2023 with the kingdom of God inside us, within. And we're saying, Lord, may your kingdom come into my day. May your kingdom come into my life, into the life of my family, into the life of my children, into my workplace. Your kingdom come into how I deal with your people, into my ministry, your kingdom come. And as the Lord's kingdom comes, he brings it. All the things that the Lord Jesus taught us in, if we go through the Gospels, he teaches us how to be. He teaches us that we should um, forgive one another, love one another. He teaches us all sorts of things that he teaches us in his word because he teaches us principles of the kingdom. He says, this is how the world will know that you are my disciples if you have love one for another. And so as we walk into 23, Lord, let us not... Forget that we are children of the kingdom. We are children of the kingdom. And we bring the kingdom of God with us. Some people, this is all kingdom that they will ever see, that they will ever experience. When they experience the love that you give them, the forgiveness that you give them, the patience that you have with them, it's all the kingdom. And when they are sick and you offer to pray for them, it's all kingdom that they will be exposed to. So as children of the living God, this is a time when we are working into this year. We work in victory, we work in faith. In Romans it says, now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. And it says, uh, uh, faith, the faith that we have in God, that faith is the one that is the one that the Lord takes us through. It, uh, that was Hebrews 11 that says, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Yeah. And that without faith, it is impossible to please God. So as children of the kingdom, we know that we are a people who believe in the word of God. We are the people who believe in the Lord our God. Yeah. Amen. Amen. And so when we take our faith into the earth, into our workplaces, into the tram, and we are there living, being living epistles. We are living testimony. People will read us. You are the only person maybe somebody will read to know who God is like, what God is talking about. Yeah. They look at your life and like, I can't be that patient. I can't do it. I, I can't forgive after all this happened. I can't do it. But she does. I don't know how she does it. You are the only person that is an example of who God is and how God should be. So let's walk into this year with, with faith. Let's walk into this year. We are loaded with promise. We are loaded with seed. Yeah. The seed is in the ground. So we are not going about looking for seed. The Lord has already put the seed inside our hearts. And the whole previous year and previous years the Lord has been speaking and some of the things we haven't seen manifest but this year we walk this year with our eyes wide open looking unto Jesus the author and the finisher of our faith amen praise the Lord and God is faithful he will see you through all the things that he promised he doesn't forget he will work with you. He will come through for you. When you need to be comforted, he will comfort you. We know we have seen him. We have seen him at work. We have seen him comfort us. We have seen him give us strength. We have seen him be our strength and our shield. Amen. So, all I want to say is let us be mindful that we are people of the kingdom. Let's enter this year with our heads held high, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, knowing that he's got it. The Lord's got it. He's got it in his bag. He's got it. He's got our lives. He's got... He said, in this world, you will have trouble. But I have overcome the world, he said. So, 
all the trouble that we see, I mean, we don't even need to look too far to see trouble. We, 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 we will just watch the news and watch our lives and watch how expensive things are, how tough it is and how cold it is and, and with all the, the other things that affect everything. Everything seems to be affecting everything and everyone seems to be going on strike because things are not meeting. But our things meet in Christ. We, as children of the kingdom, we know that he makes all things work together for our good because we love him and are called according to his purpose. And we also know, as I read in Matthew 18, that when we come together and we ask in agreement, yeah. he will do it for us. Right. Will he not do it? Will he not do it? He will do it for us because he, he who promised is faithful. Yeah. We just need to do our bit the way he has ordered us to do them. Not do whatever we feel like and then want God to come and put a rubber stamp on it. Uh, the word of God says that uh, the, he orders the steps of the righteous. Is it Psalms 37, 137. He orders the steps of a righteous man are ordered by God. So if the Lord is ordering your steps... I liken it uh, as you are driving your car and you've got your sat nav going on. And it says in 300 yards, 10 left. And you think, no, 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 I don't like that road. I'm, 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 no, no, no. I'll go straight. I'll see what I'll figure it out. Yeah. And then when you have missed the 10, that was on the motorway. And the next one is you have to make a U-turn. Then it says, on the next roundabout, take the fourth exit yeah. and go back where you came from. And the Lord will, the Lord's Satnav GPS system is flawless. Sometimes you follow the Satnav and it says, in the middle of nowhere, you have arrived. They're like, uh uh, where? I haven't arrived. There's no one there. But the Lord doesn't make mistakes no. his gps system is perfect and when we obey his word he will take us there yes. when we miss our turns he will redirect us yes. and he will not say we have arrived when we haven't arrived mm -hmm. so when we will go into this year let us go knowing that first and foremost the lord is faithful and he has given us a lasting seed and there's a seed for every season yes. there's a seed for every occasion and the Lord does not sleep on the job. He's not like they were doing when, when uh, uh, they were uh, uh, between Elijah and the prophets of Baal and like shout louder, maybe he's gone on holiday. No, no, no. The Lord doesn't go on holiday. He neither slumbers nor sleep. He's there watching over you. So as we go into this year, we know that he is faithful, him who promised. Yeah. The seed is in the ground for everything we need and that. His kingdom is here yes. and he has entrusted us with the issues of the kingdom and we should do whatever he tells us to do Mary had the right idea in John 2 when uh, when they had gone to that wedding in Cana and uh, and there was no more wine and uh, he said to the servants do whatever he tells you to yeah. do you and I need to do whatever the Lord tells us to do because therein lies our victory. We overcome in Christ Jesus. Uh, Paul says we are more than conquerors through Christ Jesus who loved us. Amen. So let us not forget those principles of the kingdom. Let us not forget that whatever the word the Lord is teaching us, it is for our good. And let the word of God not just be head knowledge. Mm -hmm. Let the word of God minister to your heart and grab it and take it. Because that is the word that will produce faith. And faith is the one that's going to move mountains. Mm -hmm. The faith that you get from the word of God is that one. That one is mm -hmm. the one that moves mountains. The faith that you get from uh, other people saying some philosophical things out there, I don't know what it is, but when it's to do with God, the one that moves mountains, yes. that will move your mountains in 2023, wow. is the one rooted, founded in the word of God. So let us be that people 
that obey the word, that listen to the word, that hunger after the word of God, because that's the word of God that is going to produce faith. And that is the faith that will move the mountains before yes. us. In the last days, we read in, 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 in Timothy, Second Timothy, things will be tough. Perilous times are, 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 are upon us. And you don't need even the Bible to tell you that things are tough. You can just see that they are, you know. And when we see it in the word, we just get confirmation that, yeah, the Lord said it. Yeah, he already said it. But he's also given us mm, the way to overcome. Yeah. He has given us the methods to yeah. overcome. He has given us the directions. And so as we enter this year, brethren, I just want us to thank God for seeing us through 2022. Yeah. But we thank him even more for going before us, yeah. for leading and guiding yeah. us. And we are assured that the Father, the one that who loved us, will never leave us nor forsake us. So um, as children of the kingdom, let us close by praying the Lord's Prayer. Yes. Right. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those that trespass against us and lead us not into evil but deliver us from evil for thine is the power and the glory forever and ever amen praise the lord so may the lord go with you into 2023 may his grace abound in your life may his kingdom go before you in everything you do or say and may his word be a reality in your life and may the seed that he has planted inside of you and inside of the church yield fruit and be manifest manifest this year may we see the promises of god come alive his promises are a and amen. amen. Hallelujah. Wow, thank you, Tembi. What a great word. You probably heard me in the background saying yes and amen. And let me encourage you to say yes and amen to the word of God this morning. We believe the word and the truth of the word of God, don't we? And thank you, Tembi, for being faithful um, in all your struggles. Uh, and all the challenges you've been through recently to bring the word of God in such an inspiring and a powerful way at the start of this new year. So thank you, Tembi. We're going to close with a song called God of Revival. We do thank God for the year that's gone, but we're going to believe for even greater things in 2023. So we're going to sing, for, sing God of Revival because that's what we pray for. That's what we long for. I want to see it in my lifetime. I want us to stir our hearts and really see a move of God in this town and in this church in this coming year and in the days ahead. You know the chorus, it says, uh, the darkest night, you can light it up, you can light it up, God of revival. And I'm reminded in the darkness that even a single candle flame can pierce the darkness. And that's who our God is, he's the light of the world. And we pray that the, the, the darkest night, he will light it up. Uh, in these days ahead and in this dark world. So let's sing together God of Revival. Thank you. You know, these pre-recorded services, they're not the same as being in church together as church family, but sometimes it's a, a necessary thing that we need to do. <clears throat> and I pray that in some way God has touched your heart this morning through the worship, through the word, through sharing communion together online. I just pray that you will have sensed something of the heart of God this morning, some of the words that will have spoke deep into your heart and into your spirit. So as we uh, lead into uh, a new year, we're going to close with a song called God of Revival. God of Revival, that's what we're longing for, isn't it? We thank God for the goodness of yesteryear, but we pray that we will press on into good things in future and see revival in this land, to see people restored uh, to the Father. So let's sing that song, God of Revival, as we uh, proclaim goodness and favour in this new year. The Lord bless you. Let's close with this song.
again because they're great words. See what you can do. God of wonders. Your power has no end. The things you've done before in greater measure you would do again. Because there's no prison. stir something in our hearts come awaken your church come awaken your people god of uh, god of revival pour out your spirit on all people lord we pray that our church will respond 
to the power of the Holy Spirit on our lives and that we will be about your business in 2023. Lord, come awaken your church, awaken your people. We long to see revival in this land and we commit ourselves to serving you in this new year in the name of Jesus. Amen, church. Amen. The Lord bless you. Friends, I hope the Lord's spoken to you in some way this morning. And uh, I just pray that you'll take what you've heard into the new year. Uh, next week, we are back in person in church. I'm going to bring a pastor's new year message. The year after, we're going to share vision, short term and long term, as we look forward to what God is going to do. So I'm just going to pray, Lord, I pray that you will uh, move in a big way in 2023. We thank you for the work that you've already done. And we thank you in anticipation of what you're going to do. And so now, Lord, I pray that the, uh, the love and joy and peace of Jesus Christ will be with us all now and evermore as we head into this new year. Thank you, Lord. You are a good God, a faithful God. And we bless you. Amen. Look forward to seeing you next week in person, 1030 King's Family Church.